All right, guys, welcome back to the game. We're about to get into the Dason Station, Dason Station, uh, Potato Potato, I don't really care. Um, if you're waiting and you're sitting there for the next game, make sure you hit up us on Twitter, Polygon SE2. Uh, go to the Match Arena. That link will be in the uh, in the chat anytime now. And remember that we are selling Polygon Gaming stickers. They're really cool, high definition. Um, I hope we eventually get some more material because that logo is absolutely sick. Big, <laughs> nice shield sticker. I think it's cool. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, so we will have those keys to you guys uh, by the end of this entirety. But this the map station. is so yeah. crazy. This is the craziest map I think in the map pool right now. Yeah, no, it's definitely a really interesting map, and I mean, we've definitely seen a lot of really. Uh, I'm well. I'm excited to see how these players particularly do this, uh, but getting into this game. Silver, want to get these introductions underway? Yeah, we've got Harstam. He's down by two. The score is 3-1. He's our pink Protoss player, and he's in the bottom right. And spawning. Oops, I'm looking at the wrong person. That's awesome. Spawning in the top left corner. It's the green Zerg up 3-1 to one in this best of seven. It's a laser. All right, guys, this is Dasan Station. Dasan Station is basically, and this is how I've heard it described, and I like it, I think it's funny, is the new steps of war. Your spawning locations are extremely close. There is just a little bit of space in between both bases. I think this is the map that Nathanius did, did his video on, actually, where uh, siege tanks don't fit through. I'm not, I'm not totally sure. Does not matter. You get a gold natural in the front of your base, but expanding there is an aggressive expansion. You expand towards uh, your enemy, and expanding towards the back is a little bit safer, uh, but provides no uh, gas or gold advantage. Yeah, it definitely. And whoop, looking at these cameras, we do have hatch gas pool uh, coming from a laser, as we have seen in his typical fashion. I mean, he did get the gold, and he is uh, definitely transferring everything over there. Uh, so. Really looking to get those uh, quick quick minerals there. Yeah, the gold advantage for our Zerg player is going to be huge, especially if he goes uh, really heavy ling pressure through the middle. They'll be quicker. They'll get there very uh, very fast around the map too, so he can attack from behind and do just as much damage as from the front. The front going to be blocked off. The back going to be a little bit less assuming. Uh, this map, haven't played on it yet, to be honest with you. I have not played a single game on this map. Haven't seen it on ladder. Uh, haven't played any custom games on it, but every game I've cast on it has been insane. Yeah, we do have these lings breaking down these rocks here. Just going to try and open up that bottom path, interesting enough. And actually, we that is going to go all the way over to the natural for Hearthstone there. And that's definitely going to be pretty, pretty dangerous if those lings really do start flooding on through. This is a scary map for Harsom, guys. Harsom, like I said, the, ma the more macro-oriented player. This is match point. If a laser takes this, the score will be 4-1, and he will take the best of seven. Uh, it looks like Harsom falling back on Adepts. He definitely had a different opener for this map, for this specific map. He opened with uh, two gates instead of a uh, gate nexus uh, cybernetics core. We have our Twilight Council on the way for that Adept upgrade. And um, a nice wall going down in the back to make sure Lings can't just have their way with him. <laughs> yeah, those Lings to have their way. I do like that. Uh, so Adepts looking pretty prepared. These Dropper Overlords actually, though, looking rather Beautiful. dangerous. And they're, they're moving on over. I mean, look at that airspace. It's so quick. And, I mean, as I'm saying that, these Lings getting dropped on down... They're already in the main. That's that's so much. And we also have a little attack on the natural side uh, for Hearthstone. And these Lings, just so much. Queens aiding the Lings in this aggression and the oh, pylon. It's done. There's only one, or Mothership Core with one single pylon to draw two pylons to try and defend this. But uh, as we're going, I mean, these, these transfusions are just absolutely nuts here. GG! Oh my gosh, what? a laser! What? 
That was absolutely nuts. A laser with the uh, the shank, I would call it. Wow. Attacking from two directions, one directly over the middle of the mat with a nice big drop, super effective, equally effective in the back of the base, breaking down through that uh, the single adept block. Uh, just not enough units quite on the board yet. Looks like Harstum not prepared quite on that map. Yeah, holy cow. I mean... That was uh, that was a quickie. Four minutes of 33 seconds, ladies and gentlemen, and a laser takes the series four to one against Harstam. Yeah, I mean Harstam was definitely heavily favored. Here. It's was it 67 to 33. Oh my goodness! Holy cow! Uh, yeah, the. Interview should be happening in just a few moments. We're going to be getting Hearthstone, or sorry about that, we're going to be getting a laser into this. And uh, for the top donators, we're going to be having some games to be played. Uh, viewer's choice. Yeah, guys, if you want to play some games with, is it just a laser hanging around or is it Hearthstone too? I believe it's just a laser, but I'm not 100% sure, so please do not quote me on that. So if you want to get in some games in with at least at least a laser, possibly Hearthstone, make sure you get a donation in because it's not you're not paying us so much anymore. You're paying to play with this professional player, um, and it would be outstanding to see some um, some community uprising for these invitationals. This is the first one I've been a part of, but so far this has been by far the best experience that I've had with a um, a, a casting organization but we're not just casting we're not just creating content we also have some great players um in gm and masters making their way up towards the um semi-pro scene I, yeah i believe yeah uh also if you liked our event guys uh leave some some likes <laughs> on the Twitter. Make sure you voice your opinion on social media. It gives us a lot of motivation and it gives us the um, the numbers to really provide you with an, uh, a nice quality content piece within the next month, maybe two months. I'm not totally sure when the next one is, but this one to me went very well and I am so happy these two players were willing to come around and hang out with us. Yeah, I know these guys were uh, really good sports about everything and uh, definitely a lot of joking going around in the lobbies and it was a good time had by a lot of them. It was definitely good to see these two guys uh, duking it out for a little bit of a prize pool here for you guys. And definitely hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we are going to be hopping yeah, into let's that, see that score screen. If you guys haven't haven't seen what's going on so far with the score screen, Harston only took one map today. It took game two. Um, game two was on Frost. And uh, he took it by playing a really heavy disruptor style and really nice engagements against the lurkers, uh, showing up that he is really powerful in the mid to late game. As we all know, Harstum at probably a, one, one of the peaks in his career, playing very well right now, but a laser for true esports, showing that Zerg is just so powerful, very able to kill Protoss in the early to mid game, not bothering to try to fight him in the late game. Because as I've heard, and I'm sure as many of you have heard, um, it's not smart. 